So this is 3 part B and we're now going to look at importing the uh, instructor table. So we'll start off by going to external data again and we'll import so text file we'll browse find the instructor table now on the left hand side here you can see these are the instructors that we're going to import so the data is there we've got the date of birth it's in full date and time format although we'll just be using the date part uh, we've got there that's the gender the job title and the other data right, we'll close that down we don't need that so moving on Okay, there's the data we imported into Access now. We'll say we want the first row containing field names. We'll skip this part. We'll let Access add a primary key. Instructor, that's a good name. So we'll just tidy the table up a bit now. So if we go into the Instructor table and we'll have a look at the design view. First of all, we'll put Instructor ID there. Now, if we remember, we had a design, so we can see that we want our full name to be 20 characters long, so let's change that. Same with our surname, we want that to be 20 characters long. Date and time, we're going to be using this as a just a date only, so we'll just go for a short date. Uh, gender is just going to be the one character, M or F. And then we've got job title. We said that would be 17. So we'll go for that. We've already made that decision. Our charge is in a currency format. That's fine because we want it to be currency in access. Although we've said that it's going to be real, the currency will make it real. It will put it to two decimal places for us. Um, here we've got uh, our maximum number of hours, which we said would be just a, an ordinary integer or even a byte at two digits. And uh, weekends uh, is going to be a yes or no. So that's uh, the same as a, a Boolean. So we've got all of our data in there. Okay, you're now asked to add information about three other instructors. Let's have a look, just make sure that's come across first. There we go. So now we can add the information about the three other three instructors. So here they are, they're from task one. And we'll just uh, see if we can pull this presentation over a bit. If we make it a bit bigger, there we go. I was trying to uh, move it to one side, really. That was better. Right. So we had Samina Kawa was our, our first instructor. So we'll put her name in. Uh, date of birth. Now we know that she joined. Uh, she became a driving instructor in June 2001. So it's got to be at least before 1980, so it doesn't really matter what we choose. Um, we'll go for that. We know that she's female, okay? and we know that she is a senior instructor because she's on the presentation. Her charge, well, we, we can decide what we want the charge to be, so we'll go for um, £18 an hour. Maximum hours, I guess free. We'll say she doesn't work weekends, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so you've then got to add some more instructors in. Uh, we don't need our admin assistant and our office manager, so we can delete those just by highlighting them. It looks like I've got to do one at a time, so we'll do them one at a time. I'm not going to add the other two instructors in for you. Um, but what you need to bear in mind at this stage when you're putting the data in is what is going to happen in 3D part two, where you're asked to perform a search for data. Uh, now all this means is that we probably need to print this out later. So we, we'll, we'll do our printout at a later time rather than doing our printout now. So we've got most of our instructor data sorted now, uh, but we're also asked to include photographs of each of the instructors. So what we need to do is change the structure of our table. So we'll get a design view and we'll add a field called photograph. Now this is going to be an object linking and embedding object, so OLE. So we're going to select that and that means that we can now choose an object outside of a database and that object will be a photograph. So if we go back to data sheet view, we can see here there is an option to add the photograph. We're not going to do that just yet because we need to prepare them. 
Now here's our three photos of the three senior instructors that we're asked to add in. First thing I'm going to do is put them into their own folder. Um, this isn't necessary, but it's a good idea to keep everything together and then it can be kept with the database and you know that uh, those are the files that you're going to need to move with the database if the database gets moved anywhere because they need to be in the same place. Now, at the moment they're called Ben, John and Samina. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but we could also uh, use the primary key to identify those photos. Now, I'm just going to do that because I think it's good practice. Of course, we may have two Bens and so we, you know, it's no good calling them all uh, ben or Ben 1, Ben 2 or anything like that. So um, Samina, we can see the primary key is 15. Uh, John, if we look over here, the primary key is 16. So we'll change that one. And Ben, the primary key is 17. So we'll change Ben. Now at the moment they're in JPEG format. Uh, the way the access works, you, they have to be in a Windows bitmap format. Now you can either open them one up one at a time in paint and then do file, save as, change the type to a bitmap, or you can use some sort of batch processing software. Uh, Earth and View can do it, uh, Photoshop can do it. I've got a piece of software called SnipClick, which if I go on here, it's in my right hand menu button, so SnipClick, and I'll configure uh, this. It's a great piece of software because it will do all sorts of things like changing the size of your photographs as well. Um, but all I'm going to do is change the way that the data is stored. I'm going to change it to a Windows bitmap. I'll save the configuration. Close that down. And now the important thing is that when I process it, I have them all selected. So snip, click. I'll process them. And there you go. I now have three bitmaps. I'll get rid of the JPEGs. We can put them somewhere else if we want. We could have uh, changed the file types before we change the names if we wanted. It's completely up to us. So what we're going to do is insert the photographs. So we'll start with Samina, number 15. Right hand click here, insert object, because it's an object. And we're going to create the object from a file because we've already got the file there. Okay, so I'm going to browse. I know where I've stored it, in here. There we go, there's my instructor photos folder, and I want number 15. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to it. That means that it's not going to store the picture inside the database file. It keeps the database file a sensible file size and keeps the pictures outside. So if I click on OK now, right, we can see it just says that it's a paintbrush picture or a bitmap image. Right, we'll do that once more. So right hand click insert object. You can see the difficulty I had there. I had to just click somewhere else and click on it again. Create from file 16 link. And we might as well just do the last one while we're here. So insert object create from file browse 17 link. OK. Now, as I said, we probably don't want to print our table yet. We could do, and uh, when it comes to showing your evidence of real tasks, if we go to File and Print, and look at Print Preview, you can see it's not going to fit on Portrait. And if we change it to Landscape, okay, it's still not quite fitting. Uh, so we just need to change our margins a little bit. So if we reduce our margins to, uh, let's go for about six millimeters each. Oh, look at that, it fits on. And what OCR have said is that when it comes to evidence in the pictures, you can just do it like this, so it shows that there is some sort of image there. Um, if you want to spend a, a couple of minutes uh, making sure those pictures actually show, what we've got to do is just create a very, very simple report. So if we close this, and we can create a report using Report Wizard, we'll add on all the instructor fields, leave everything as it is, don't choose any options there, but this one will opt for justified. Now you'll see what a justified report looks like in a minute, and we can leave it as portrait. Uh, instructor, that's absolutely fine. Finish to preview the report. 
and this is what it's going to look like the photographs are going to go there so if we go to the end you can see it's showing the table so it's showing the data in the table and the photograph so if you want to show that then you can do okay so that is the end of the instructor table